Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with County Board Chairman Mike Vandersteen. And today, as we do every month, we have one of our directors of a very important department here, Aaron Brault, who's our planning director, and with him, the leader of the non-motorized transportation program, Emily Vetting. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you both here. Aaron, please begin by sharing just a little bit about yourself and introducing one of your coworkers. Sure. Um, I've been the uh, interim planning director for uh, roughly six or seven months. Prior to that, I uh, worked on the non-motorized program specifically as a program manager and as a project specialist. Um, Emily is currently the project specialist, doing a very fine job. And uh, I believe Emily's been uh, involved in our department for roughly a year now. So. Now, you were the non-motorized project manager for a number of years. Yeah, roughly four years. Four years. Yeah. Was it difficult to turn it over to Emily and kind of give her the reins, or has it been a pretty smooth transition? Uh, we work well together, I, I would say. Um, it, it's been a smooth transition. It's always difficult to give up the reins to something that you've been... Uh, spending so much of your time in and uh, and uh, so yeah it was there were some things that are difficult but she's doing a great job and and uh, I think things are going well so and you certainly are continue to be involved with yes, it among definitely. many other yep. things yep yep yeah. so um, the way it's sort of worked out between the two of us I still do the day-to-day -day, you know budgetary things uh, contracting uh, working with the engineers and things like that and Emily's been really taking an active role in the community outreach activities. So. Very good. Well, I know you two make a good team, and I imagine most of our viewers have heard about the non-motorized transportation program before. We've been working on this for a number of years now, Aaron. You've been doing a fantastic job since Emily's been here. She certainly has helped con um, continue to improve upon it and get people interested, but please set the stage. When did the sh when was Sheboygan County selected? What is the non-motorized transportation program? Why is it important? Sure. In, in 2005, um, as Congress, even back then, started to uh, delve into how we're going to fix our transportation system, uh, there was four communities chosen to uh, basically uh, run an experiment. Would a targeted investment in those communities result in uh, different ways or provide opportunities for other uh, means of transportation um, besides the automobile? Um, so that, that's basically the goal of the program, to, to see what kind of results that kind of targeted investment. And the key word there is targeted investment. In, in years past or in, in prior programs and in prior grants, it was always, you know, one project and out. So you never had a complete network. And so that was one of the goals of the program was to, you know, and our network won't be complete at the end, end of this uh, uh, grant, but, um, you know, we'll be much uh, further on. Um, so that was, in essence, the goal of the program. So we're a guinea pig. Basically. And we were, were one of four. There are three others. What are the three others, and why were we selected? Sure. Uh, I'll answer the, the second question first. Congress wanted a very diverse uh, range of communities. Uh, the other three communities were Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, Columbia, Missouri, Marin County, California, and then Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. Um, and if you look at the, the, the four communities, four very different communities, Minneapolis, big, urban, dense uh, uh, community, Columbia, Missouri, uh, big college town, uh, Marin County, California, the suburban community, bedroom community to San Francisco, and then Sheboygan, more rural, um, blue collar type of workforce rather than white collar. And uh, so again, four very diverse communities. And that was on purpose. They wanted to see what worked, what didn't, in each of the different types of communities. So 2005, it's been a number of years now. Um, give a snapshot of what's happened since. Sure. Um, going back to the other communities where Sheboygan County differed a little bit is that we didn't have a comprehensive plan in place. So early on, starting in late 2006, um, the county really got going on figuring out where we wanted to build facilities and we came up with a comprehensive plan. Um, it, we had well over a hundred and some different meetings, uh, had public input sessions in each of the, 
almost every incorporated community in the county just to get the public's input on what we wanted for our community and, and to uh, really be good stewards of the uh, dollars that came our way. Um, so that was early on, you know, the first year, year and a half, um, going through the, uh, the planning process, getting that public input. And then we had open call for applications where communities in the county could apply to the county or to the grant um, for funding for specific projects. And uh, those projects were then reviewed by a 30-person Citizens Advisory Committee, you know, very active group. Um, again, the, the chair of that committee attended well over 120 some odd meetings. Um, and most folks on that committee attended, you know, I'd say well over 50 to 60 meetings. So very, very engaged group, uh, dynamic group all different walks of life. Um, so they gave a gut check to the projects and then ultimately our uh, Joint Resources and Transportation Committee, Planning and Resources and Transportation Committee uh, gave the final yay or nay on the projects. Um, so going back, that was really the first year and a half, two years. Um, since that time, starting in about 08, 09, we saw a couple projects trickle in. Um, it's federal money, so sometimes it's a little difficult to spend the money uh, with all the uh, requirements that, that they uh, place on it. Um, but now we're really starting to get going this year. 2011 will be a big construction year for us, and 2012 uh, will also be a big construction year for us. Um, Excellent. So. I think this is probably the most active public participatory committee that we've had, at least in my tenure in Sheboygan County. As you said, over 100 meetings. Yeah. I want to give a shout out to Dirk Zeilman. Uh, I don't know if he'll view this program, but certainly there might be some folks out there that know Dirk Zeilman, who was the chair of this advisory committee. Yes. Just did a tremendous job, and he led by example, didn't he? Yeah, early on, he didn't have a bike at the beginning of this program, but um, he and his wife each bought a bicycle. And, and basically said, well, we're going to lead by example. And uh, I don't know how many miles he's put on, but he keeps track. He's, a, he's an old banker, so he likes to uh, keep track of these types of things. And, and, uh, and uh, I know they, they continue to do so. Um, they live out in the town of Mosul, so they got a pretty good hike to get into town. And I know they like to take trips into town to go to their, uh, grab some food at McDonald's now and again up on the north end of uh, Sheboygan. And, and, uh, so yeah, they've been very active. I met with him just the other day, and I think he said it was a six or seven mile commute one way, and he yep. frequently rides his bike to yep. and from, so I give him a lot of credit. Well, yeah. he did a fantastic job. Your advisory committee as a whole was very engaged, as you said. They had to develop a plan to determine where the network was gonna be, how they were gonna spend these funds, uh, we received in, in the range of what, 20 to $25 million? Well, about 22 and a half million ultimately ended up uh, coming our way for projects. Um, and as you said, projects then were recommended by the advisory committee to the county's Joint Resource Transportation Committee. Yes. And what types of projects did they select? What's underway? Um, well, currently, well, what the monies were allocated for roughly uh, 14 miles of additional sidewalk. Uh, and sidewalk gaps. Um, the committee felt those projects were important uh, in many instances to uh, try to eliminate school busing. Uh, it's a lot cheaper to put in a sidewalk than it is to provide school busing. Um, so 14 miles of additional sidewalks, about 30 center line miles, so um, 60, I guess, ultimately, of, of bicycle lanes and Cheryl markings. Actually, here in mid-May, late May, and, and early June, those are going in throughout the county, so about 30 miles of routes uh, marked on the street. And then an additional nine miles, roughly, of multi-use off-street types of pathways, and about 22 miles of paved shoulders to provide uh, uh, a bike lane basically on more of a rural section type of road where there's no gutter, or curb gutter type of thing. So um, overall, uh, including our non-infrastructure projects, because, uh, and Emily will touch on this a little later, you know, community outreach and ed educational types of programs are very important in a type of program like this. Um, overall, we had uh, nine educational outreach uh, types of projects. Uh, that we did early on in about 27 different infrastructure projects. Although that 27 infrastructure projects can be a little misleading because uh, like the projects in Sheboygan Falls, there's 28 different segments of that one project. So uh, the net has been really cast far and wide throughout the county. And like I said, 11 and 12 will be our big construction years where folks will start to see these. 2011, 2012. So yes. it's been, you know, five, six years later until people are really gonna see 
infrastructure going into place. Yep. It took some time to develop the plans and it select did. the projects. It did. I, it, if you look at a road project, we're moving quickly. I mean, granted, our projects are a little smaller in scale, um, but uh, you know, general rule of thumb from what I've heard is about eight to ten years to get a, a road project through the necessary hoops. And uh, so we're, in that respect, I guess, moving rather quickly. But it, is, it still has been a little frustrating, uh, you know. But it's, it's a great opportunity for the community, and, and the, the uh, benefits far outweigh the, uh, um, some of the frustrations that we've had. Excellent. Nice overview. Mike? Emily, uh, since coming to Sheboygan, I know you've been actively involved in the community outreach programs. You've got a real big event, the Bike and Walk to Work Week, coming up. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what's planned, who's involved, and, uh, and uh, what's going to take place, and what goals uh, you're trying to achieve with this particular project? Sure. Um, Bike and Walk to Work Week is held June 4th to the 10th this year. Um, we have lots of really cool events going on, I think. We're doing some of the same that we've done in the past and a couple of new things. Um, the event is going to start on Saturday the 4th. We're going to have a Wacky Bike Expo. So if you've got a bike that you've modified or you've decorated or something like that, we're going to award prizes. We're going to actually have um, judging for that. And then a little bit later on, there's going to be a scavenger hunt. And the person who finds the most items on our list by biking or on foot is going to win a prize for that. As far as some of our week-long events, um, we're having an employer mileage challenge in which you can go online and track your mileage. And we award prizes in several different categories, such as longest commute by biker, longest commute by walker. Um, there's also a general, general participation award. Um, besides that, as far as week-long events, we have the bike to shop raffle part, um, which is something new that we've done this year. Uh, the idea was brainstormed at a planning meeting we had a couple, a couple months ago for it, and we're really excited about that. We have around 60 merchants around the county in Kohler, Sheboygan Falls, Plymouth, and the city of Sheboygan, and they're participating. And the way that that works is anybody in the county, you can bike or walk to your favorite store. They'll have a little flyer in the window indicating that they're a participating merchant. And you go inside and you get a raffle ticket. And then at our end of week celebration, we're having a drawing to award prizes for those raffle tickets. And we've actually had uh, an overwhelming um, amount of donations come in from local businesses. So we've got prizes in all sorts of different categories. And this year, for that in particular, I'm really trying to encourage people that nobody lives too far away to participate. I think sometimes people hear this sort of thing and they assume, well, I live in Elkhart Lake, it's not feasible or, or you know, based on time constraints, it's not really the best option for me. But I'm really trying to encourage people that even if you live too far away, you can drive part way and say if you're biking, you can bike the remaining three miles. Or if you're walking, you can walk the remaining mile. So everybody's really eligible to participate. Um, we're also doing uh, commuter stations Monday through Friday, which run from 6 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. The two that are going to be held in the city of Sheboygan will be having one at the Erie Avenue Trailhead behind Memorial Mall on Wednesday. And then on Monday, we'll be having one at Fountain Park. So if you're biking or walking on your way to work or in the morning, you can swing by for a cup of coffee or fruit. Um, and then finally, on Friday night at Paradigm Coffee House in downtown Sheboygan is, as I mentioned, when we'll be having that drawing for the Bike to Shop raffle. And there's also a bike in movie, which is a bicycle related family friendly movie. It's a lot of activity, sounds great. I really like the fact that you moved it back in the calendar year yeah. a little bit. Now, what are the dates again? June 4th to the 10th, Saturday okay. the 4th through Friday, June 10th. That'll be a fun time. I hope so. Um, now, I know you've also been involved in uh, some program with the, the schools, and, um, and one of the programs is a walking school bus program. That sounds a little bit odd, but mm -hmm. wh who's involved and how does that work? Well, this program was first piloted at Grant Elementary in the city of Sheboygan, and the way that it works is we've got about 20 volunteers. Most of them are from the senior center, and they walk four different color-coded routes on the way to Grant Elementary in the morning, and as they're walking, they basically pick up students along these different routes. Um, Grant was chosen nearly every single one of their students lives within a mile of the school. And a mile is a 20-minute walk, and, and nearly just as many live within three-quarters of a mile. That's easily a 15-minute walk. And nowadays, only a fraction of, of children walk to school compared to what it was. 
And with this program, we're really trying to encourage the obvious benefits, like reducing congestion in the morning with all the cars from parents taking their children to school and the health benefits. It's a great way to get some additional exercise before the school day starts. Um, but it was also neat to see, we, be we began this program in the fall semester at Grant, and we ran it for the first 10 weeks of the school year. And it's neat to see with some of these outreach initiatives, the positive externalities that have really resulted. Um, the last day that the walking school bus actually ran in November for the fall session, um, I walked one of the routes and it was neat to see because the volunteers really got to know the students along the way and that rapport that they developed I thought was really neat. You know, they, they exchanged some hugs and said, you know, a lot of the seniors said to the students, if you need someone to walk you in the future, I'll, I'll definitely walk you. And, and we've had good feedback from that as well. Um, we're running it again the spring semester um, for the last uh, six weeks of the school year, so that's in process right now. And um, yeah, that program has been very fun. Now we can see the infrastructure improvements, we can see the bike lanes that are being painted actually this week in, in the uh, county, um, but why do you do the outreach programs? Why is that a necessary element of this whole program? You know, by having those infrastructure projects out there, by having those sidewalks and the bike lanes and that sort of thing, people have the tools to bike and walk and leave the car behind but until they know why they should do it and why it's important to do so and why it might benefit them, people aren't gonna just necessarily utilize those, those infrastructure projects just because they see them in front of them. Um, of course, that's the hope with some of these projects, especially as we move along in the infrastructure projects, that people are gonna see more of them out on the ground and, and it'll give people that idea, you know, hey, this is, you know, this is right here in my community. I can do it easily. Um, as Erin mentioned before, the issue with Sheboygan as a county being more rural, and we've got a lot more rural communities where people might have a longer distance to drive than, for instance, if we were to live in, if we were in a college town um, compared to some of the other bigger college towns where it just is quicker to bike or walk. And, and that's a cultural mindset that people have there just because it's quicker to bike or walk than to be stuck in traffic. Whereas here, we're in a cultural mindset that it's habit to just get in the car and, and drive to where you're going. And a lot of times this is just because it's more feasible to do so for time constraints that people have with busy schedules. But a lot of times people don't realize the changes that you can make with the short distances. Um, such as if you're, if you're um, driving part way and then walk to a lot of your, a lot of your destinations. And by, by seeing other people doing it and by telling people why, it, why it's important and encouraging them to do so, that's what we're really hoping will get the mindset, the cultural shift there. And for instance, the bike and walk to work week. This is something that we're promoting people to do just one week out of the whole year. But the hope is that by getting somebody out there and doing it just this first week, they might realize, well, this is really good exercise right away while I'm going to work or with gas prices around $4 a gallon, hey, this is gonna save me some money. And we really hope that in that way, it might lead for some lifelong changes and impacts. And, it's important also as we've been targeting especially school age children along the way, the younger generation. Um, for instance, with the walking school bus, that cultural mind shift at that age, and we've also got other school related outreach initiatives like the walking school bus, or the um, walk to school days, I'm sorry, which is typically held in fall and spring. And this winter, we actually had our first ever winter walk to school day. And that was held at James Madison and there were over 40 students that participated. And it's neat because as adults, we get kind of sick and tired of the cold weather here. But the students, you know, they had some extra time to gather before school and play in the snow and play in the playground, and they loved it and they really enjoyed it. And between that and the walking school bus, it's just neat to see the extra social interaction that, the, that they get to have before the school day even starts. And a lot of times it's making new friends in the neighborhood that they might not have had otherwise, too. That's great, Emily. How are we doing at getting people involved? Uh, is that something that's plateauing or is that still, uh, are we still involving more people with these outreach programs? Definitely more people are being involved along the way. Um, and that's because of the fact that these outreach programs have changed along the ways. You know, we didn't just do something in 2006 and then continue that, continue trying to approach or cater to a certain group of people or type of people. Um, for instance, another example is our rebike program. And this is a group of people that we haven't targeted in the past so much because it really um, caters to, for instance, at need people. Um, 
This program is held um, nearly every Wednesday, and what it is is we've had a number of bikes donated from, from very generous area residents, um, the police department, the sheriff's department, and um, we've also got four regular volunteers plus a few others that are down there on a semi-regular basis um, at the basement of Paradigm Coffee House. And basically anyone from the community can come down there and work on a bike. We ask that they work on one for, say, two or three hours. And since these are donated bikes, they might not always be in the best condition. And they work on the bike and they fix it up and then they can take it as their own. And, and that's a really great way to encourage people to still be interested and encourage them to do this because we can have those tools out there. We can have the bike paths and the sidewalks, as I mentioned, and the bike lanes and the sharrows. But until people are, have the resources to be able to do so, for instance, these at-need people, um, we've had some kids that come down there and everything, until they have a bike to actually be able to utilize those things, it definitely makes it more of a success, I think. If Isn't I there add. one day of the week that uh, you get together and people can bring things down? Mm -hmm. Which day is that and what time? It's Wednesday evenings at Paradigm, located on A Street in Sheboygan, and it's usually from 5.30 to 7.30. During the summer, it, it runs every month, um, every week, I should say, and we've actually had such overwhelming um, participation with this. We've given out... By now, I would say we've given out upwards of 100 bikes. Excellent. And Actually, it's over 200 in the past. Less than a year, two, over 200 bikes have been <clears throat> distributed, a lot to the Boys and Girls Clubs and, and uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So. That's fantastic. And that's open to anyone. Well, you can tell, everybody can tell that you bring a lot of energy to these projects, these outreach programs. Thank you very much for that. With that, I'll turn it back over to Adam. Well, speaking of energy, Aaron, as well as had to have his hands in a lot of things at the planning department now as in the role of director and recently was asked to get out to Washington DC to uh, appear before members of Congress to talk about our non-motorized transportation program and and how we're doing how it's coming along uh, please share a little bit of what that was like sure it, it was very interesting in, interesting to say the least um, the, the four pilots were invited out uh, uh, for congressional briefings on, on both the House and Senate side. So Senator, uh, or Senator Klobuchar from Minnesota uh, provided the invite on the Senate side, and uh, uh, Congressman Blumenauer from Oregon uh, wanted to hear about it. And, and the basis for going out there basically was they wanted to, uh, compared to other programs at the federal level, our legislation dictated that we had to uh, measure what our results were. So that's very different from a lot of other federal programs. Um, so these past four or five years, we've been collecting data to present back to Congress on, on what this investment did. Um, so uh, we went out to Washington. We had uh, some congressional briefings where each of the four pilots got to uh, state their case. And in the instance of Sheboygan, when we compare our baseline data in 2007, versus 2010, bicycling's up about 22%, mm -hmm. and uh, pedestrian use is up about 12% in our community. Um, that's on our local counts, um, and it's also uh, uh, sort of confirmed by the, uh, the census. The census takes counts through their American Community Survey every year, and uh, we see roughly the same percentage increases going up in that as well. So um, mm -hmm. Our local counts are also backed up by more national aggregate accounts. So. But since we started this in 2005, biking is up 22%. Yes, at least at our eight locations that right. we took baseline data in in 07 versus 10. And then walking, you said, was? Uh, about 12%. About 12%. I mean, that's outstanding, and that's before the infrastructure and many that's, of the projects are even in, in place. Yeah, so that goes to show how important these education and outreach activities are too to you know provide that sense of community that you're not out there alone doing it and uh, you know one of the al analogies that we've always used touching on <coughs> some of what Emily said is would you drive your car to a place if there wasn't a road or a facility and the answer is obviously no and it's the same for bicycling and walking so how, how are we comparing to the other communities because I know they don't have the winners that we do at least. Sure. Well, actually, Minnesota, Minnesota does Minneapolis yeah. was just uh, ranked the number one bicycling city in the in the country. So oh, it goes yeah. to show you can do it in a winter climate. Okay. Um, their numbers uh, roughly mirror ours. Uh, Columbia, Missouri um, are similar to ours as well. Uh, in Marin County, California, steals the cake. They beat all the other three, and they're up quite a bit. Um, 
I think they've reported a 50% increase in their bicycling and, and a 40% increase in their walking. I'll be darned. Um, and looking at them, they don't have the winters to deal with. They have hills to deal with. So some of their key projects were opening up old tunnels, and uh, which provided barriers. There was only one main road running through, and it was very congested. And it's actually quicker for them to bicycle now than it sure. is to deal with that traffic. Bike. Yep. What kind of impression did you get from the members of Congress or their aides that you interacted with? Are they supportive? Do you see this trend continuing? What I think so. I, I, I really do. I mean, even in the in the media, you, you hear about liv livability options and, and uh, you know, I think communities are, are realizing that this is, you know, not only from getting folks out of their cars, it, it's a livability thing. It's, it, it's a healthier community. Um, it's a more attractive community to have these types of things. So then it's easier to retain employees, attract employees for employers. So, uh, you know, I think employers are, are uh, 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 you know, supportive of these types of efforts that communities are making. And, and so... I, I think as we move forward, you know, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, it was all auto-based, and I think we're starting to see some of the, the effects of that, and mm -hmm. now we're starting to say, take a step back a little bit. Well, even Emily was talking about, you know, so many kids today don't walk to school, even if it's less than a mile, and of course, everyone walked to school mm -hmm. prior to the yep. 50s and 60s and 70s. Uh, yep. and I think the, even then, a lot more people were walking to school than, the, than are today, and sure it's back. good to see that coming back. Yeah. Yeah, back in the 50s, about 60% of kids, and now it's down to about 13% of kids walk to school. Well, you're both doing outstanding work, and I, I think some people in the community have followed this, have thought, boy, that's nice. It's nice to see these trails being developed, people being encouraged more to get out of those vehicles and walk and bike. Uh, I know there have been some folks who have thought, hmm, why are they spending these kind of resources on bike paths and pedestrian paths when there's other needs? But we really were blessed with the fact that we were one of four pilot communities that had this essentially fall in our lap. And uh, thanks to your leadership and Dirk Seilman and many others in this community, we're making the most of it. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I definitely, we're being good stewards of those dollars and, and we picked the projects I think that'll have the most effect for our community. Well, thank you both for coming in today. We appreciate the overview. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact either Aaron or Emily at our planning department. I know they're happy to, to respond to questions, or if you have any suggestions for improvement, we, or we always welcome that as well. So thank you for joining us. Next month, our airport director, Chuck Mayer, will be here to talk about the very important and good work happening at the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport. And until then, thanks for joining us.